Welcome to the American Citizens Abroad Podcast. I'm Michelle, and today I'm chatting with Angela, Operations Manager at Roman Vacation. Welcome, Angela. Thanks for chatting with us today. Hi, nice to be here. Thanks for having me. How about telling us a bit about yourself? How did you end up in Rome? I studied abroad in Florence when I was in college and fell in love with Italy. I then did not use my Bachelor's in Fine Arts for quite a long time, living in Syracuse, New York, and came back here on vacation visited Rome, Florence, Venice, and just realized that I still had my passion and flair for art, especially Renaissance and classics. And so when I went home, I found out that dual citizenship was a thing and started the process. And I just thought, you know what, I'm going to move to Rome. I was sick of the Syracuse snow and came over here and haven't looked back. How did you get involved with Roman Vacations? The long and short story is both COVID. (laughs) There's a strange thing that happened with the model of how people run businesses with the Coliseum and the Vatican was vastly different prior to COVID, where everything was very much in-person sales, some online sales, but not nearly as much as it is now. And I had become a tour guide here in Rome when I first moved here. So I made a bunch of tour guide friends. And then after COVID happened and they opened things up here in Rome, A couple of them approached me saying that they had wanted to start a business based on the old model. And now that they couldn't do that, they wanted to see if me as an American who is highly motivated and good at detail oriented things wanted to join them and start a business with a full website backing and all of the online platforms as well. So we teamed up. There's three of us and we opened up Roman Vacations. What insider tips can you share with us about Rome that we would never find in a guidebook? Oh, there's a lot. (laughs) The main one I would say when it comes to visiting Rome would be if you want to see certain sites, always check what time of year is busy time and come not that time. So spring, March and early April are really nice. Late October, early November are great. And when you're trying to visit different sites, if you're in a busy time, always make sure if you don't want to book tours that you're going on to the site's actual official ticket sites for sales because otherwise you're going to get upcharged and all this. Some other little secret things, the buses never run on time. Don't count on them. They will arrive. They just might arrive 20, 30 minutes late. And there's only three metro lines in Rome. One of them goes out to the suburbs. The other two stay around the city center, but no metro goes through the city center. So everyone thinks that staying on a metro line is the best way to go. And that can be true if you want to get to and from the train station quickly. But other than that, for the most part, staying in the historic center is a nicer experience. It's just you're going to be taking taxis and your own feet a little bit more. And then the last tip would be basically restaurants. Don't get sucked into the tourist traps and know that if you are got a good view of a great site, you probably are going to pay a lot more and get not so great food. So Mm -hmm. go around into those weird little alleys and find some holes in the wall with no pictures on the menu. And if you can get a menu in Italian only, that's probably the way to go. What are your favorite spots in Rome, whether it be for shopping, eating, going out at night or just hanging out? So I have a few favorite restaurants. Uh, La Quercia near Campo de Fiori is great. I love going to Villa Farnesina. You're in the middle of the city right next to the river, but kind of feels like you're outside of Rome. It's an old palazzo built by the Chigi family, owned by the Farnese family. It's got some Raphael frescoes. It's got a nice little garden, and it's just a nice spot that I really enjoy. Going to the Villa Borghese in the park, walking around, checking out the little pond, lake. They call it a lake. It's a pond. And just kind of having a relaxing day is nice. And shopping, I like my own neighborhood personally for shopping. Cola di Rienzo's got a street full of shops, and it's just a little bit less crowded than the city center shopping. What is it like running a business in Italy? What are some of the challenges and the perks? It's an interesting experience running a business in Italy. The perks are you're in Italy. And the Italian lifestyle is very laid back and very much you go to work when you want to go to work and you don't when you don't. Tourism is a little bit different in that. You know, we need to be here so that everyone's vacations run and go off without a hitch. 
but it's fun to do and it's nice to not leave your house before 9 a.m. ever. <laughs> the challenges are Italian banking, registering a business at eight different places. It's really only three, but having a commercialista, a lawyer, a notary, making all of them have appointments for you within the same month. That's tricky. Um, it takes a couple months to open a bank account, sometimes longer. Just little things that you take for granted in America that happen quickly and easily don't happen so quickly and easily here. <laughs> How easy was it for you to adapt to living in Italy and in Rome in particular? How would you compare life in Italy with life in the U.S.? For me, it was pretty easy to adapt because I'd been here before a few times. I had lived here in college, well, in Florence, and I knew that I needed to lower my expectations, <laughs> basically. I think that where Americans will often get in trouble when they become expats in Italy specifically is that they continue to think that things are going to be done in an American way. They won't. <laughs> and <laughs> you really have to adjust your expectations for that. No one's going to show up on time to a dinner. No one's going to show up on time to most business meetings. You're not going to be able to walk into a bank and say, I need a check for this down payment. I want to put on an apartment. You're going to have a landlord that sometimes wants to file a contract and sometimes doesn't. And if they don't, they can kick you out and you're going to be able to go to the supermarket, but then they're not going to have five of the things you need. And so you hit five supermarkets on your way home or the shopping is all done in different stores. You have a butcher, a baker, and literally all of these things are in different places depending on what you need. It's different. It's unique. But if you're prepared for it and you hope a lot, but you have really low expectations, you're going to be very happy. If you don't, you're going to be very sad and you're going to end up leaving <laughs> because things do not run like they do in America. Do you think you'll want to live in any other countries? At the moment, no. I think that France is appealing and there's a little bit of appeal to the UK, maybe Ireland, Germany, Austria. They all have their appeals. They all seem really cool, really nice. I visited a few places. The Netherlands is great. I just don't know if I would want to live there. I think that they all have a little bit more of American vibe with regard to what I left, which is all of this kind of nine to five situation or things being efficient. And also they're cold and I moved here for not cold. <laughs> so <laughs> if I left Rome, I would probably stay in Italy. I don't see myself leaving Italy. Are you engaged with the American expats living in Rome? And if so, who are they? I am engaged with a few American expats living in Rome, most of whom are also in the tourism industry. There are a few tour guides that I know, a few people who are office managers and working in that side of tourism, a couple of English teachers, but mostly it's the tourism expats. So it's also not just Americans, quite a few expats from around the world in this tourism industry. So that's mainly who I'm associated with, with regard to Americans in Rome. Do you know what some of the common issues Americans in Italy face? Yes. Many people come here thinking they can live that dolce vita and just stay however long they like, whether they have paperwork or not. That is starting to change rapidly, and people are starting to notice that that's a lot harder to get visas, to get the correct documents, to stay. And again, going back to that whole thing where when Americans come here and they have a difficult time adjusting to the fact that when they go to register their new apartment contract, they get turned away because somebody didn't have their coffee that morning and doesn't want to register their contract. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Americans often get stuck in these little circle traps of you have to have this in order to file this. You have to have residency to file for your carta. You have to have your carta to get your tessera and you have to have your tessera to file your residency. That often happens where you end up in this weird kind of circle of not being able to get something done based on the system. What are some of the common issues American business owners in Italy face? The same. <laughs> Basically, <laughs> all of that, exactly the same, just on a business level. So it's even more frustrating. Like when it was just my personal life, it was fine. <laughs> I had all day and I made my own schedule. And if I had to spend an entire day sitting at the residency office, then I was fine with that. But now that I'm a business owner, those things are a little bit harder to swallow and those are a little bit more challenging. But you're pretty much at the same problem <laughs> with that, too. Any final thoughts you'd like to share? 
For as much as Italy seems a little bit broken for Americans who come here, it really is an amazing place to live. It's a perfect laid back lifestyle. Everyone's super kind. Living in the center has its perks. Living just on the edge is even better. You get to learn some Italian, or in my case, fake your Italian, and really get to know the people and, and how friendly they are and what an amazing place this is when you can walk out of your house and 10 minutes later be standing in front of St. Peter's Basilica or at the Vatican or take a train for 30 minutes and be in Tivoli at the water gardens that everybody has on their Instagram. It's just a special place. So it's a, uh, it's a really fun time and it's a really good lifestyle. So I would say there's some perks and there's some downfalls, but ultimately Italy is probably just as good, if not better than everyone thinks it is to live here. Thanks for chatting with us today, Angela. Yeah, you're welcome. It was a pleasure. And I really appreciate you reaching out to me to do this. It's really, really cool. The American Citizens Abroad podcast is a monthly podcast that is published the second Tuesday of each month. It is edited and produced by me, Michelle, and is a product of American Citizens Abroad. You can find us on Twitter at ACA underscore podcast, on Facebook at American Citizens Abroad podcast, or you can email us at podcast at Americansabroad.org. Remember, give us a good rating on Apple Podcasts so other Americans living abroad can find us.